Call this meeting to order. This is the City of Rancho Mirage. That is mine, isn't it? Okay, let me start again. Call the meeting to order. This is the meeting of the City of Rancho Mirage City Council, the Library and Observatory Board, the Housing Authority Board, and the City Council representing the Redevelopment Successor Agency. This is the regular meeting for Thursday, December 21st, 2023, and it is 1.01 p.m. And for the flag salute, Kofi Antobaum, Director of Administrative Services, would you please deliver the flag salute for us? Thank you, Mayor. Please join me in saluting our nation's flag. Ready, begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ryan, I was tempted to call on you for the flag salute so she, you could show off that wonderful <laughs> holiday jacket you're wearing today. Uh, would the uh, city clerk please take the roll? Of course. Council Member Mulatto? Present. Council Member Marker? Here. Council Member O'Keefe? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Weil? Here. And Mayor Downs? I'm here. Uh, and uh, I'd like to welcome our newest city council member, Michael O'Keefe, to his first full city council meeting. Welcome, Michael. <laughs> Uh, first item today is uh, a presentation from the Rancho Mirage Chamber of Commerce, Katie Stice. Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, guests that are here today and virtually, it's my pleasure to be in front of you today. Um, actually, um, not to give too much of a chamber update, the chamber's doing great. Last I was here, I got to share a lot of great things. Um, I'm really here because um, we're here to celebrate our city manager, Isaiah Hagerman. Uh, happy birthday to you. <laughs> a little birdie told us that it was your birthday. And so we just wanted to take a moment to I have some friends with me. If you guys wanna come on over. Uh, we just wanted to take a few minutes to really publicly thank you for, <laughs> I see him looking over at Gabe. <laughs> um, just thank you for your leadership. And um, I don't know what this community would be like without your brand of leadership and the team that you've created and these amazing council members. I don't know where the chamber would be. I don't know where the children's museum would be, but you're a champion for this community. We all look up to you. We so uh, enjoy working with you and happy birthday, happy holidays. Thanks for all that you do for us. Thank you. Welcome. Good job, Katie. Well, um, I have been in my position for three years today. I started as the interim director. And I remember when I started, Katie said, you have to call Isaiah because he's a city manager and he knows all the things. and He's going to be a great resource. And I was like, but he's a city manager. He's not going to want to talk to me and what have you. But I did call him straight away. And in the last three years, I've called you for big things and small things and everything in between. And you've always been so gracious, so kind, so helpful, and never made me feel like I wasn't worth the call. So thank you for that. And thank you for supporting the museum. You're the greatest. Happy birthday. Thank you, Cindy. Well, Isaiah, it's good to see you. Happy birthday. Uh, I just wanted to say on behalf of everyone at Sunnylands, we wish you a very happy birthday. And thank you for always being such a great support of our organization and the work that we do. Uh, you know, it, it just makes it so much uh, easier to work with folks like you who, uh, who are easy to work with. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much and happy birthday. Thank you. On behalf of the Omni Rancho Las Palmas, I want to say happy birthday, Isaiah. Um, as a business leader in the community, it's great to have someone as flexible and understanding and um, goes out of their way to make sure that um, everything's fair for everybody involved. So I appreciate all the help that you've given. Gabe introduced us, I guess, two years ago now, and it's been great. So thank you, Isaiah. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you guys, that was very kind of you for uh, being here. Uh, I, I am definitely the lucky one. Um, I get to do a lot of great things and it's because of the people that I work with, both here at the city and out in the community. And I feel uh, very lucky uh, to get to work with you as well. So thank you guys. 
Quick story on Isaiah and staff. So a couple of days ago when it was his official birthday, staff birthday bombed his office. <laughs> we should have taken a photo to put it up, but it was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. So happy birthday, Isaiah. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is non-agenda public comment. Uh, this is an opportunity for any member of the public to speak for up to three minutes uh, on uh, any topic of your choice. If you do wish to speak to an agenda topic, please wait until that agenda item is called and you will have an opportunity to speak. Uh, so please limit your comments to non-agenda public comments and please try to limit to three minutes. Uh, do we have any speaker cards? Uh, City Clerk. Yes, we do. The first speaker is Isaiah Harris. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Temp, City Council, and staff. Well, what I intended to speak to today uh, is mind-blowing uh, in terms of what just transpired uh, a few minutes ago. But before I start, I just want to say congratulations to um, Council Member O'Keefe for your elevation to the City Council, and I pray for your uh, successful tenure on this uh, Council. What I want to address is something that occurred at the last meeting on December the 7th uh, during this uh, open session when uh, a lady, uh, Ms. Garner, came forward and laid out a real st story that uh, to me was a little depressing. But I'm not here to talk to the veracity of what she had to say or whether or not um, any real action has been taken with respect to that. What I'm here to address is what I observed during um, that period. I know these meetings are held under the Brown Act and the proceedings are governed by Robert's uh, rules. But absolutely, after the statement by uh, Ms. Garner, I was greatly impressed with what I observed when I saw the city council, I'm sorry, um, the city manager leaned into the mayor and gave him what I believe was some counsel. And then the mayor turned around and addressed Ms. Garner and told her that the housing manager will be speaking to her when she returned to her seat. I thought that was great. Then I observed the city manager left his seat, went to the back of the chamber and spoke with the housing manager. When the council adjourned for closed session and I walked out, I saw the housing manager, uh, someone from the sheriff's department and another individual talking to Ms. Gardner. To me, that was just outstanding and phenomenal. And so in my business, when I was dealing with it before I gave all that up, what I would have granted to you, Mr. City Manager, is what I would call a spot award which simply meant that you've done something what I consider to be phenomenal. And so, unable to uh, do that in my capacity as a resident of the city, what I would like to ask of the uh, city attorney, if we're not gonna violate any ethics rules, I'd like to take you for a cup of coffee. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. The next speaker is Deborah McGarry. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, my name is Deborah McGarry. I'm Public Affairs Manager for Southern California Gas Company. And first of all, I would like to say congratulations, Council Member O'Keefe, on your appointment as City Council Member. Um, enjoy it. It's always a lot of fun. Uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about our winter bills. Um, as you know, last year we did have some significant bills. Uh, we don't anticipate that this year. But I want to kind of give you some information on how customers can be able to monitor their bills better and give also some ways that could actually help them as well. And since today is the first day of winter, I wanted to share some new programs that we put in place. One is an optional customer text message that you will get from the gas company, and it's called the Natural Gas Price Notice. We launched this on November the 14th. Customers who sign up can receive a text message from SoCal Gas when there is a 20% or more increase on the monthly natural gas commodity. And let me just explain 
The rates, the way they're set up is that you have the service rate, which is controlled by the California Public Utilities Commission, and the other part of it is the commodities price. The commodity price for natural gas is something that we have no control over. That was the part of the bill last year that really spiked, that created an issue. So when it gets and it goes above that 20%, it would send that customer a notice to let them know that a portion of their bill is going to be higher. Customers can learn more about this program by signing up on SoCalGas.com, that's S-O-C-A-L-G-A-S.com, backslash notify me, and or through their My Account. Some people can sign up online and get notices and have better information about what um, their bill is going to be. Um, it actually gives you real-time information. It tells you approximately what your bill is going to be by the end of the month, and you can do that through your SoCal Gas website. And then finally, some of the information I also wanted to share is that this year, the uh, U.S. Energy Information Administration also mentioned that they don't expect that the temperatures are going to be so cold, which is really what caused the spike last year. So that's a good thing. So we probably won't be using as much gas. And then finally, if you want to, you could go up to SoCal Gas website and go to where it says customers, resident customers, and you could go to programs and service and there's so many different ways that you could actually save money. You could get a level playing plan. You could go ahead and if you qualify, get a 20% discount. But there's a lot of different ways in which you could go ahead and save money. So I will share this information then with the city clerk, which I believe I already have. Um, but I will send it to her and the city manager. And if you guys would like to, you could post it on your website so customers know. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. And Deborah also is one of our contemporaries. She sits on the council in La Quinta. Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Wally Melendez. Good afternoon, um, City Council, <clears throat> Administration, uh, and we, the people. Speaking of the famous Rancho Mirage University and the famous hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles charging station and how the two in, intertwine to save the atmosphere of the earth, of the world. The thin blanket that covers the earth like no other planet in the universe. There is no Earth <clears throat> B. There's only Earth A. And how the gasoline burning vehicles, not only in Rancho Mirage, but all over the world, are destroying the atmosphere, which the obvious with the carbon monoxide that comes out of all those vehicles from burning gasoline. So the obvious solution to that, obvious, is to get rid of all those gasoline burning vehicles and replace them with battery-driven vehicles. Batteries have to be recharged. That's why you either plug them in or you use another apparatus to recharge them, like a fuel cell, which runs with hydrogen and oxygen, which has no exhaust of carbon monoxide, of nothing, just a few drops of water. 
So that is the key word today. Elimination. Elimination of the gasoline burning vehicles of the world. Thank you very much. That was the last speaker card. Is there anyone in the audience who did not submit a speaker card but would like to speak? Okay, please step up and, and state your name. Okay, anyone who has a non-agenda item they would like to speak on? That was the last speaker. Well, now we'll move on to, uh, city. Thank you, thank you Isaiah. Now we'll move on to uh, city council board member comments and uh, I will begin today uh, so we have Christmas coming in a few days, so it's an appropriate time to again wish uh, everyone in Rancho Mirage the happiest of holidays and uh, um, a good, a prosperous new year to come. Um, the best gift that uh, Santa could give to any city council is a well-run, well-regarded, well-funded uh, city filled with uh, happy, or at least mostly happy residents. Um, I think it might be too much to ask even Santa to make all the people happy all the time. Um, but I think that uh, Santa has delivered on that gift to our city for a great many years, and I think there's a pretty good chance that he can do it again in 2024. Uh, the other item that I wanted to speak today is, to, to today is a group called Wreaths Across America. Uh, Wreaths Across America celebrated a memorial um, celebration last Saturday here at Desert Memorial Park. Uh, Wreaths Across America is a group that gives the gift of wreaths on the graves of veterans who have served our country. They do it uh, every year now, they've done it for five years. Uh, in addition to Desert Memorial Park, there were similar services at 4,000, more than 4,200 cemeteries across America. Uh, there is about uh, a 30 minute or so celebration and memorial to the veterans and then um, uh, the, um, the members of Wreaths Wreath Across America fan out across the uh, the Memorial Park and place wreaths on the veterans' graves. I was honored to ask to, uh, to speak uh, this year and to welcome the group to Wreaths Across America. I um, saluted them for the gift that uh, they gave to our veterans this year. Uh, and of course, uh, it's, a, it's a great gift to give to our veterans, but it's small in comparison to the gift of freedom and liberty that our veterans have given to, to us. So thank you to Reese Across America. They do this each year, and, um, and um, I appreciate the work that they do and hope they continue to do it for many, many years yet to come. Okay, other council members. Uh, council Member Mulatto, do you, uh, council Member Mulatto, do you have anything you'd like to add? I would. Just very briefly, uh, it is the holiday season, as we all know. I wish all of our constituents, our business owners, the happiest of holidays, a belated happy Hanukkah, and a very prosperous, healthy new year. We thank you for your support, your guidance, your feedback, your participation, and we look forward to partnering with all of you again in 2024. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Weil. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Uh, I, too, want to wish all of our viewers and constituents uh, a most happy and healthy New Year. Uh, we have an exceptional city. Uh, I'm very proud of it. And our job here is to maintain this level of excellence. And that's our objective. Last Saturday, uh, I had the pleasure of participating uh, at uh, the river at Ben and Jerry's where Riverside County Sheriff's Department again participated. Uh, in the picture is uh, CSO Kyle Albanicius. Kyle, I didn't destroy your name too badly. I just got a thumbs up from him. <laughs> um, and, along with um, the uh, Jessica Bonds who's in the communications department Lori Kittering, who is the owner of the Ben & Jerry's franchise, uh, and myself. Uh, uh, Mayor Downs uh, also participated in the event. And what it was is you uh, essentially brought a toy uh, for a child in need and or you were able to buy a toy there for uh, 10 bucks and contribute it. It was terrific, and again, it demonstrates the warmth and the commitment of our Sheriff's Department. Um, the, uh, the leadership is beyond compare, 
and we constantly get uh, so much praise from our sheriff, from Cal Fire, for everything that makes this city the exception that it is. And so Saturday was most beneficial. Uh, again, it says children are, are our nation's most valuable resource. And today, children are tomorrow's leaders, civic, business, and social. This is an alarming statistic, but approximately 15 million American children live in poverty. The new toy a needy child receives during the holiday delivers a message of hope, and we want to be part of that. We want to encourage every child to be able to have hope and to reach for the stars. And we're going to do everything in our power to assist them and lift them up so that they can achieve that. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Council Member Marker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to wish everyone a very happy and healthy holiday season and a bit of good news in January. The pickleball courts should be ready to go. Thank you. Thank you, Meg. Council Member O'Keefe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it was two weeks ago that I was appointed to the City Council. And I would just like to say during those two weeks, I've been to two ribbon cuttings with the chamber and uh, at first at the hospital out in Indio and then last night at the gift store at the river. And it doesn't matter if it's a big event or a small event, your chamber is always there. And I just want to say uh, you do such a great job and it's a, uh, it was a pleasure to be involved with it. I would like to um, say a big thank you to everyone for the kind and welcoming comments I've received from you. Uh, it's quite touching, and uh, I really appreciate it. And I want to give a special thank you uh, to the city staff who have given up their time generously to get me set up. And I would like to add that I know, and all of you know, that no one can fill the shoes of Richard Kite. However, I am delighted to be here, and I hope that I will conduct myself in a way that Mayor Kite would approve of. And I'm counting on you to let me know. So I also wish everyone a very happy holiday season and a great new year. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Michael. All right, uh, next is city manager comments and would you go right ahead into a consent calendar after that? Certainly will. Uh, I just wanted to take a second and uh, thank the city staff. Each year uh, we do a toy drive for uh, needy children here in our valley. And this year, uh, staff stepped up again and donated um, $5,000 worth of toys to needy children here within our valley. Um, our city staff does a great job day in and day out. And we do certain functions throughout the year that support the community. And it seems when we need help, uh, they're always willing to step up. So I just wanted to acknowledge our great city staff and thank them. Uh, they definitely make this a special place, a special city and uh, it wouldn't be the same without our city team here. So thank you guys for everything that you do. I'd also like to take a second for, uh, just to acknowledge our uh, first responders. So our sheriff and our fire personnel, you know, we get Christmas Eve and Christmas day off, uh, but there's deputies to respond to emergencies and there's paramedics to respond for medical aid. Uh, 24 7 so uh, they missed some holiday time with their family so I just wanted to acknowledge our first responders and thank you guys for what you do uh, for our community with that I'll go ahead and summarize the consent calendar uh, there are 14 items on the consent calendar for consideration <clears throat> item number one is to approve the December 5th 2023 special meeting minutes item number two is to approve the December 7th 2023 regular meeting minutes Item number three is to adopt resolution number 2023 next in order, designating the city of Rancho Mirage's authorized agents for non-state agencies as required by the California Office of Emergency Services, Cal OES. Item number four is to approve the final acceptance of emergency street repairs to Highway 111. Item number five is to approve the final acceptance of improvements for parcel map number 36913. 
Item number six is to approve the final acceptance of the Wolfson Park expansion. Item number seven is to accept the final acceptance of Bob Hope Drive ADA ramp retrofit. Item number eight is to approve the final acceptance of the demolition of property located at 41501 Button Drive. Item number nine is to approve the final acceptance of the citywide RIAs for fiscal year 23-24. Item number 10 is to adopt resolution number 2023 next in order, approving the calendar year 2024 salary schedule to comply with CalPERS statutory and regulatory requirements. Item number 11 is to receive and file the five-year development impact fee report. Item number 12 is to appoint council member O'Keefe to outside agencies, boards, committees, and commissions uh, that Richard Kite represented. Item number 13 is to approve contracts. Item number 14 are demands. And before we go to council comments or questions, I'll have the city clerk take public comment on the consent calendar. Thank you. I did not receive any speaker cards on the consent calendar. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on any consent items? There are no speakers. Thank you, Christy. Uh, do we have uh, any council comments on the consent calendar? Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion to approve. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. And I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. All right, we now move to public hearings. The first item of public hear on public hearings, the public hearings agenda is agenda item number 15. The subject is environmental assessment case number EA23-0011 and preliminary development plan case number PDP 23-0005, Cotino Count Center Phase 1. And to deliver the staff report is Senior Planner Joy Tsai. Joy, your report, please. Good afternoon, Mayor Downs and members of the City Council. For your consideration today is the first phase of the Cotino Town Center located in the northeast quadrant of the Section 31 specific plan area. The first phase of the Cotino Town Center includes two restaurant buildings, three inline retail buildings, the Artisan Village, and accessory uses and structures such as the park, shade structures, and restrooms. The applicant is also proposing a back of house building for staff. This project will result in approximately 41,000 square feet of combined commercial and office space. This slide here illustrates an overview perspective of the project site. The North Restaurant Building and the master infrastructure was previously approved by the City Council. The restaurant building is shown here in red and the master infrastructure, which includes the parking lot and interior streets is shown here in yellow. The first phase of the town center includes various commercial components as well as the back of house building. The project site can be accessed from two entryways of, off of Monterey Avenue. So first off, we have the back of house building, which is intended for employees from both residential and commercial sites. The building will have its own parking lot and the site will be enclosed by a six foot tall perimeter wall. The site is located at the boundary of the residential and commercial areas. This slide here shows the rendering in the back of house. The maximum height of the building is approximately 12 feet and the building is designed to blend in as background architecture. The planting palette for the landscape plan will match the approved, approved palette in the specific plan and the track map. The applicant is proposing to provide shaded parking through shade trees such as Mulga and Desert Museum Palo Verde trees. Next up, we have two restaurant buildings located east of the North Restaurant at the terminus of Illustration Way. This slide here shows a rendering of the restaurant and the valet parking drop off. The two buildings here are allocated for both table service and quick service restaurant uses. There will be a service yard in its rear which will be utilized by all town center tenants and screened from the public view. This slide here shows the elevations that are visible to the public. Building heights will vary up to a maximum of 22 feet. 
varying facades are proposed throughout the retail and restaurant buildings, such as metal, breeze block, stone, and wood-like materials. This helps to create a vibrant atmosphere in the town center. Please note that the murals shown here are for illustrative purposes only. Next are, are the three inline retail buildings located on the east side of Painted Shore Drive between Illustration Way and Gallery View. This rendering here shows the view from Painted Shore Drive facing east. The inline retail will have a mixture of retail, quick serve, and table service restaurants interspersed throughout. Tenants have not been determined at this time, though the buildings will typically have end, end cap food and beverage uses. The restaurants will usually have their own dedicated covered outdoor dining area. This slide here shows the exterior elevations of the first inline retail building. Storefronts vary in height, finishes and colors, and more to create interest. There are variations in solar protection, such as fixed shade structures and trellises. The bottom elevation here shows the typical back of house for all three inline retail buildings, which will be screened from the public view. Building heights vary from 15 to 19 feet tall. Next, we have the second inline retail building. This rendering here shows the varying facade elements, such as wall treatments, recessed entries, and breeze block screen walls, which are incorporated into the streetscape design. This helps articulate the individual tenants and engages the pedestrians. This shows the floor plan for the second building. It is nestled between the two other inline building and there are two walkways lined with shade trees that lead to the main parking lot. This slide shows the exterior elevation for the second inline retail building, along with the colors and materials proposed. These facades differ, uh, differ slightly from the first building, and although they do share some, uh, some elements that pull everything together while allowing each tenant to be highlighted. Finally, we have the third inline retail building. This building is located at the corner of Painted Shore Drive and Gallery View Way and across from the Park Plaza. There is a public restroom and utility building to the rear of the building. This slide here shows the exterior elevations from the dirt building. Wall treatments, recessed entries, and various shade structures are presented to help highlight individual tenants. Next up, we have the Artisan Village. The Artisan Village consists of nine smaller individual tenant spaces located along the west side of Painted Shore Drive. There is a pedestrian walkway that goes through the Artisan Village along with outdoor covered seating areas. This slide here shows the overall site plan for the Artisan Village area. There will be shade, various shade trees and shade structures to provide solar protection for pedestrians. The Artisan Village exterior elevations evoked a more coastal and marine design with the white, linen color, and stone. Various vertical and horizontal sidings and mesh railing are also incorporated into the design. The applicant is propo proposing a public park and plaza to the south of the Artisan Village. This area is meant to be a gathering space for active and passive uses. The lawn area is framed by a crescent-shaped arcade trellis structure which, uh, with various casual seating areas interspersed throughout. This rendering shows the view west from Painted Shore Drive. The portal, which is the tallest por portion of the arcade, acts as an orientation point and lines up with the alley of palm trees and gallery view way. The overall landscaping theme for the town center puts emphasis on native, native adaptive, drought tolerant, and low water use plantings. The planting palette is desert appropriate and is in compliance with the specific plan. As proposed and conditioned, the project meets the specific plan standards. As a part of the project review, staff send notices to responsible agencies and any received comments have been incorporated into this report and the conditions of approval. Staff received one letter, one comment letter, which was distributed to the city council members yesterday. Otherwise, staff has not received any other outside correspondence or comments regarding this request. <coughs> staff recommends that the city council, A, 
find the proposed project exempt from CEQA per CEQA guidelines six, section 15162 and B, approve the preliminary development plan subject to the conditions of approval and based on the content findings in the staff report. This concludes my presentation and I'd be happy to address any questions the council members may have. Thank you. Thank you, Joy, and I'll ask the city clerk to let us know if we have any speaker cards on this uh, item. Thank you. We have one, Salvador Amasquita. Good afternoon, City Council, Mayor. Uh, congratulations, Mr. O'Keefe. Um, so my name is Salvador Amesquita. I am a member of the Western States Regional Council of Carpenters. Obviously, we, we probably know that I've been here a couple times. Um, so public speaking isn't, you know, it's fairly new to me. I'm, I'm usually out in the field building uh, projects like Cotino. And uh, I believe that we have about 350 members that live in Rancho Mirage and the local area. I mean, as far as the Coachella Valley. And we just wanted to come and, and uh, let you guys know that we, uh, we feel like we're going to be impacted by the environmental impact of this project. And we have, uh, we kind of want to see if, if you can help us out. And uh, we want to have the city kind of require that the project be built by contractors that hire locally, pay the prevailing wage, and utilize apprenticeships, a state certified apprenticeship program. Um, these workforce requirements reduce environmental impacts while benefiting the local economy. And I mean, working here is, is a real privilege as opposed to having to drive out to Los Angeles, Orange County, I mean, Riverside, you know, San Bernardino County. So that's, we're just kind of here letting you guys know again. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. That was the only speaker card submitted. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item? Okay, please step up and state your name. Good afternoon, members of the City Council, Mr. Mayor. My name is Ian Gabriel. Um, I work with Lift to Rise. We're a nonprofit organization serving the Coachella Valley. Um, we work on a regional affordable housing strategy that brings together all of the local cities, including the city of Rancho Mirage um, and the county government, uh, nonprofit organizations, affordable housing developers, um, with a goal of increasing the supply of affordable housing in the Coachella Valley. Um, I, I wanted to comment on this item in particular because it's my understanding uh, from the city council agenda that the uh, CEQA exemption being requested um, falls under an EIR that was already done but over four years ago. And um, I would urge the city to reassess the environmental impact that this large footprint um, of a project will have on the surrounding area and um, consider the change in uh, population and other uh, economic dynamics that have happened locally due to the pandemic and since 2019 when the EIR first happened. Um, should the city decide to find this project exempt, I would also thus encourage the city to um, continue in this vein and expedite um, the affordable housing uh, projects that are also on today's agenda later down. Um, so. I just wanted to um, mention that. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? That was the last speaker. Thank you. Do we have uh, any council comments on this item? I'll make a comment, uh, Mr. Mayor, that I, when I see this plan <clears throat> and I can picture uh, the amount of activity at the restaurants and just walking around the Artesian village that's going to be created, it's going to be a tremendous success. It's going to add another degree of vitality to our city. And I just couldn't be more enthused about it. It's going to be a, a revolutionary project for the city, 
as well as the entire valley. So again, I greatly look forward to uh, uh, this project and the completion thereof, and I look forward to uh, recommending approval of the, uh, uh, of the motion. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Anyone else? Okay, I do see uh, Eric and uh, Paul uh, from Cotino and from MSA in the audience. Uh, it certainly is the case that uh, at the um, Planning Commission, there were a couple of comments about, one comment was about uh, some of the outdoor rest, uh, restaurants, and one of the Planning Commissioners asked for comment about shade, uh, and also one of the uh, Planning Commissioners asked about uh, the area along uh, Monterey on the entrance uh, and how that will eventually uh, be uh, landscaped. And you gave good answers, and I'd like to give you an opportunity to give those same answers here at the full council meeting today. So please come on up, and uh, I think we'd like to hear from you about uh, how you feel about uh, how Cotino is developing. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the, of the council, Paul DePilatus with MSA Consulting. You've seen me here before. Um, yeah, those two questions that Steve mentioned, uh, the first one about shading within the uh, online retail in the Artisan Village area, I believe actually one of our landscape architects stood up and answered that question, but the fact is that we've devoted quite a bit of attention to looking at sun angles and things like that, and we recognize that to make that a, uh, a fully uh, activated pedestrian area, as we all know, you need shade in the summertime, so that's been thought about and incorporated into the design within that area. Um, as far as the landscaping along uh, Monterey, um, the uh, landscaping that are currently uh, will remain, but it's not complete yet. Uh, there is a, an adjacent portion of the town center that needs to be designed first. We can't really complete that entirely until we know what's going next to it. So we've, we've included a, a, a fairly good landscaping with berming and other things like that along that current edge of Monterey. That'll tie into the corner landscaping, which will be finalized, but carrying the themes and things down, down the road there. But that will be enhanced further at a later time but we're just not able to do that yet because that portion of the plan hasn't been completed. Um, we at MSA are very enthusiastic about the project. We have been working on it very, uh, very diligently for the last couple of years. And uh, to see the walls going up, the landscaping will be going in, um, it's really exciting for us to see that actualized in our community. And most of us are residents here. Um, I live across the street, and I'm looking forward to going over to the uh, Artisan Village and the inline retail when it's ready. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Eric, would you like to say something? Hi, Mayor Downs and uh, council members. I'm Eric Brown, general manager for DMB. Uh, I think Paul said much of it. The one thing I will add to it is it's amazing where we've come in a year. Sadly, most of it you never see because it's underground. But we are getting there. Uh, the walls have been the first thing that everyone is complimenting us on. Next, you'll be seeing the landscaping. We're doing a lot of grading in that area around where the town center will be. And uh, we're just getting such a great enthusiastic response to it. Um, I think that we will certainly satisfy everyone's expectations. And uh, we appreciate everything you've done to help us. So thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. And thank you, Paul. Uh, okay. Um, any other council comments? And seeing none, may I have a uh, motion, please? I'll be happy to do that, Mayor. I'll make a motion that the City Council find preliminary development plan case number PDP 23 005 to be exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, pursuant to CEQA guidelines, section 15162, subsequent EIR. R's and negative declarations, and B, approve preliminary development plan case number PDP 23 005, subject to the conditions of approval and based on the content and findings in this staff report. I'll second it. We have a motion, we have a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. We move on to the next public hearing. This is agenda item number 16, and the subject is environmental assessment case number EA22-0017 and major modification case number MOD22-0049. This is Weststar New Retail Pad. 
uh, the staff report will be also be delivered by Senior Planner Joy Sai. Joy? Thank you again, Mayor Downs and members of the City Council. For your consideration today is a major modification to a development plan for a proposed new retail pad building at the Rancho Mirage Marketplace anchored by Gelson's. So we're moving on across the street from Cotino. Uh, the Rancho Mirage Marketplace uh, was originally approved in 1992 and is located at the southwest corner of, of Bob Hope Drive and Gerald Ford Drive. This retail pad will be located on a 1.61 acre parcel along the west side of Bob Hope Drive, south of the Chevron service station. The applicant is requesting to demolish a portion of a parking lot to construct a new 4,500 square feet retail pad building. This, re this request also includes a new trash enclosure and related landscaping and site improvements. This slide here shows the floor plan um, and rendering looking northeast from the parking lot. Three units are proposed and specific tenants have not been determined at this time. The main entrances to the units face the interior. This slide here shows two photo simulations, one facing south and another facing north on each of the Bob Hope Drive entrances. The proposed building design carries forth the architectural style, materials, and colors of the other buildings at the center. Notable features include the warmed desert tone color palette, blended clay roof tiles, accent tiles, and stone column skirts. In addition, a condition of approval was added to add additional arch architectural articulation to the east elevation facing Bob Hope Drive in order to provide more interest. One example would to be bringing the glazing over, similar to the Chase building in this plaza. The applicant has agreed to this condition. A parking study prepared, was prepared by traffic engineers and was submitted since spaces are being removed to make room for the new retail pad. The parking assessment evaluated the parking demand and operational needs of the, park, of the shopping center at full occupancy and concluded that the proposed parking supply of 494 spaces would accommodate the parking demand of existing and proposed uses. Here we have the landscape plan and the proposed landscape plan will match the existing landscape palette for the shopping center. The plan includes new, uh, two new finger planter areas and additional landscaping along a portion of the Bob Hope Drive Parkway. Any sparse or damaged plant materials will be replaced with like material and size. The landscape plan complies with the city's landscape standards. As a part of the project review, staff sent notices to responsible agency regarding the proposed project. Any received comments have been incorporated into the staff report and the conditions of approval. In addition, staff has not received any other outside correspondence or comments oh. regarding this request. Staff recommends that the City Council A, find the proposed project exempt from CEQA per CEQA guidelines section 15332, and B, approve the major modification to development plan subject to the conditions of approval and based on the content and findings in the staff report. This concludes my presentation, and I'd be happy to address any questions the council members may have. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. We'll now go, now go on to uh, public comment, and I'll ask the city clerk to let us know if we have any speaker cards. Thank you, Mayor. I did not receive any speaker cards on this particular item. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this item? No speakers. Okay. Do I have any council comment? I'll merely make this comment, if I may, uh, Mr. Mayor, that um, I see Connor in, in the audience. Connor and his family have owned this shopping center uh, well in excess of 30 years. Uh, they have been uh, not only uh, excellent uh, developers of a very important shopping center in our city, but they've also recognized and contributed to the public safety uh, of the area. So they've been uh, most cooperative. They've been good partners. And uh, uh, from our standpoint, uh, they have uh, done an excellent job. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. Um, and I, too, live fairly close to the uh, center, and I've been, a, I've been a shopper at Gelson's for a good many years, all the way back to, uh, 
what was the previous uh, store there? The uh, what was it? Pavilions, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So, so I've been going to your center for a good many years, so I'm glad, I'm glad to see this, this addition to the center. There was a question that was asked again uh, by uh, the Planning Commission about, about parking. I think you addressed it uh, during that Planning Commission session. So uh, the parking study certainly ind indicates that there'll be plenty of parking for, that, uh, for the, uh, the visitors to that shopping center. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll make, I'll make a motion, Mr. Mayor. That the City Council approve Find major modification case number MOD 22-0049 to be exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, pursuant to the CEQA guidelines section 15332, infill development projects, and B, approve major modification case MOD 22-0049, subject to the conditions of approval and based on the content and findings in the staff report. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Next item on the uh, public hearings is uh, agenda item number 17. The subject is approval and disposition, approval of disposition and development agreement with Pacific West Communities. I'm sorry? I want to say something before you pass it off to Got it. Okay. Um, Approval and disp of disposition and development agreement with Pacific West Communities Incorporated regarding disposition of housing authority property for affordable housing. The uh, staff report will eventually be delivered by housing manager Marcus Alleman, but the city manager would first like to make a comment. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. So the next four items are all uh, closely related, so I'm only going to say this once so I don't have to repeat myself. Uh, you know, I really appreciate the council's uh, responsiveness uh, to this issue, um, you know, once we found out that the opportunity maps were changing and it would likely result in uh, one of our sites not developing because of uh, the downgrade from high down to moderate, um, the council gave staff uh, the direction and the leeway to just get it done. And uh, I was a little nervous there <laughs> for a while, but I'm very glad that we're here today. Uh, and it took a lot of uh, effort uh, from our city attorney, Colin, thank you, uh, from Mina, thank you, Mina, and from Marcus, and also our development partners that are here in the audience today. All of us had to work together very quickly and go through um, what I would call a cumbersome legal document. <laughs> um, but uh, we had four of these going uh, under review at the same time. Uh, and from, uh, you know, our housing uh, partners, our developers, they were very responsive to our questions and had their legal team standing by, answering questions, working with our city attorney. Uh, and uh, honestly, the, the effort that was, uh, we went through to get here today uh, was excellent. And I don't know that there are many cities that could have pulled that off. So I just wanted to take a second to acknowledge uh, our development partners and key staff members and the city attorney, they, they worked weekends, they worked nights uh, so that we could be here today. And, um, you know, this is likely one of the most significant investments into affordable housing that we've seen in our community when you tally up these four items. So in total, you know, through these disposition and development agreements, we're considering approximately 37 acres of land within the city. Um, we're likely talking about somewhere around 18 to 20 million in land value. Uh, and, you know, conservatively, probably 760 units of affordable housing uh, in the city of Rancho Mirage. So uh, thank you to the city council that gave us the direction and, and let us run to be in a position today for you to consider these items. And thank you to the staff and our development partners. Uh, this is uh, a significant moment uh, within the story of affordable housing. But as I look in the past, you know, it seems to be very in line with what this city has done. And uh, affordable housing is an area that I think the city can take a lot of pride in for not only what we've done in the past, but continuing that effort to what you're seeing today. And the goal here um, is to see affordable housing develop. Now, in the good old days, when we had redevelopment agencies, they were the number one builder of affordable housing in California. 
and 20% of that money went to affordable housing purposes. And so what you saw through the RDA is the city was actually a subsidizer and a funder of affordable housing. We did very unique programs. Uh, we offered uh, programs to our mobile home communities, to other affordable uh, housing, income restricted, that wasn't city owned. We have city owned properties. And what you saw when RDAs went away is there was really no answer to how do we uh, subsidize affordable housing? In order for it to be affordable, it has to be subsidized. And so when RDAs, uh, for various reasons, were dissolved by the state of California, you had a decade where there was no true funder of affordable housing within the state of California. And yeah, a decade later, we're in a crisis. And I think what you're seeing today from the city is in line with the long history that the city has on affordable housing. You know, we, we didn't plan for the... Um, for this opportunity map to change with like a month and a half notice. That means that 640 of these units that we're talking about today would not be funded if we didn't act. And we were given a month and a half by the state of California to adjust to that information and figure out how to make this happen. But we did and we're here today. Uh, and so, you know, what we're doing is uh, extremely significant today. And when you look across our city, um, you know, we have other developments that are coming through the process right now that aren't owned by the city, but incorporate affordable housing into them. The reason that you're seeing uh, this with these sites is these were housing authority owned sites. They were owned by the city. And so we were the ones in the position to push to try to put these in a position so that they can get funded and they do develop. Again, the goal here is to put this property in a position so that these do develop. Now, obviously, these developers are well aware of funding is competitive, and they have to go through a process, and sometimes it takes a couple cycles for them to accumulate the funding that they need in order to build it. By no means do I think the city's role uh, within this is done today, but I think that this is a critical step. This preserves this high-ranking a designation by giving them site control and allows them to go chase the funding to hopefully see this develop within our community. Uh, so thank you to the staff and to our development partners and especially to the council for giving staff the leeway to do what we need to do to be here today and putting us in a position to be successful. So thank you, Marcus. Go ahead and deliver your report. Good afternoon, Chair Downs, Housing Authority Board, and city staff. On August 28, 2023, the city initiated a request for qualification with the intent to develop a multifamily affordable housing project with a minimum of 200 affordable units on a 10-acre parcel of land on housing element inventory Site B. Site B is an approximately 53.76-acre parcel of land zoned for 28 plus or minus acres of parkland and 25 plus minus acres of high-density residential with an affordable housing overlay. During the review process, city staff was made aware that the 2024 California Tax Credit Allocation Committee and Department of Housing and Community Development draft opportunity maps were made available in late October and that the designation for various sites throughout the city and Coachella Valley would be changed from high resource to moderate resource designations. This change in designation strongly impacts the potential for state funding sources, which makes affordable housing developments for this site virtually impossible as of January 1st, 2024. On November 21st, 2023, the Housing Authority Board authorized staff and general counsel to negotiate draft disposition and development agreements with accompanying deeds for the purpose of establishing site control for the development of affordable housing on housing element inventory site B with Pacific West Communities, Inc., National Community Renaissance of California and USA Property Funds, and Blue LLC for future consideration by the Housing Authority Board before the end of the calendar year. Given authorization, staff and general counsel began negotiating a draft disposition and development agreement with Pacific West Communities, Inc. Both parties have collaboratively worked toward producing a disposition and development agreement that is suitable to all involved and provides the best opportunity to achieve the development of a minimum of 240 affordable housing units. Simultaneously, staff worked with consultant Michael, Michael Baker International to map and record the new parcels of the high-density residential portion 
of assessor's parcel number 685-090-011. The site being considered is a 10 acre parcel found at the northeast corner of the larger parcel now known as parcel A1. City staff recommends that the Housing Authority Board approve resolution number 2023 HA next in order and execute a disposition and development agreement DDA with accompanying deeds for the disposition of parcel A1 of assessor's parcel number 685-090-011 for the development of multifamily affordable housing with Pacific West Communities Inc. In accordance with the terms of the DDA subject to final review and approval of executive director and general counsel. This concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions you may have and also present are rep representatives of Pacific West communities. Thank you, Marcus, and uh, thank you, Isaiah, for your comments. Uh, time for public uh, comments, and would the city clerk please, please let us know if we have any speaker cards? Yes, the first speaker is Katie Stice. Mr. Mayor, council members, city staff, and guests here today and virtually, my name is Katie Stice, President and CEO of the Rancho Mirage Chamber of Commerce, and this time I'm not here to sing happy birthday, uh, but I did want to speak about uh, the Chamber of Commerce support for uh, affordable housing and all housing in Rancho Mirage. Uh, and Mr. Mayor, thank you, and uh, Council Member Mulatto, thank you for coming to our board meeting recently and sharing with the business community. Uh, over the years, we've had a lot of conversations, so we're, we're thrilled to share today. From a Chamber of Commerce perspective, affordable housing is crucial for several reasons, all of which ultimately contribute to a stronger local economy and thriving business community. Number one, Attracting and retaining talent. Businesses need a qualified workforce, and that workforce needs affordable housing options to be able to live near job opportunities. Number two, increased consumer spending. When employees have more disposable income left after covering housing costs, they spend more in the local economy, boosting retail sales, restaurant revenue, and other vital business sectors. Affordable housing puts more money back into the pockets of consumers, directly benefiting local businesses. Number three, stable and diverse workforce. Affordable housing promotes stability and reduces turnover in the workforce. Stable employee benefits, employees benefit businesses through improved training investment, increased productivity, and lower hiring and training costs. Additionally, a diverse workforce fosters creativity and innovation, which are essential for business success in the long run. Number four, uh, community development and revitalization. Thriving businesses need healthy communities. Affordable housing helps to attract and retain families, improve property values, and create vibrant neighborhoods. This in turn creates more attractive environment for businesses to invest and grow. And number five, reduced social costs. A lack of affordable housing can lead to homelessness, crime, and increased social services costs. By supporting affordable housing initiatives, we can help reduce these costs and create a stronger, more resilient community. In, conclu in conclusion, affordable housing is both a social issue and a critical economic issue. We advocate for and support affordable housing initiatives for stronger and more prosperous community for businesses and residents alike. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katie. Ed Moreno. Good morning, afternoon, council, staff, uh, mayor. Uh, Ed Moreno, uh, resort manager, Omni Rancho Las Palmas, resort and spa right down the street from here. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick real life uh, example of how affordable housing um, or the lack of affordable housing is a disadvantage to Rancho Mirage right now. Um, you know, to the east of us, you have uh, some very, very large resorts. Um, and to the west of us, you have a lot of hotels in Palm Springs. With Rancho Mirage kind of being in the center of that, the, the, uh, the labor market tends to shrink as it comes towards our way. Um, historically, our property has for years uh, been short staffed, especially in the summertime um, when we have most of our transient uh, guests. With that, this February, we are actually flying in 40 associates from Guatemala, uh, H2Bs, uh, to stay on property, uh, taking up 20% of our, or 20, 20 rooms of our inventory 
um, just to make sure that we can service the, the occupancy that, that we hope to have during that summertime. Not only does this take out our opportunity to maximize revenues during that time, uh, it also minimizes the TOT that we're able to provide as well. Um, in addition, you know, I was just looking prior to this meeting at our roster, and we have about 550 associates on property. Um, I got through about 75, 80 of the, the associates, and I was looking at addresses <clears throat> to see who actually lives in Ranch Mirage, and I had one, um, one associate out of the first 75, 80 associates that we have that live in Ranch Mirage. So for us, the affordable housing uh, is key and crucial to us making sure that, uh, that we have the proper labor market to satisfy our guests and needs. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. That was the last speaker card. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Okay, please step up and state your name. Oh. Okay. Good afternoon, council members. Tiffany Gorman, Director of Sales and Marketing at the Ritz-Carlton Rancher Mirage. And I just wanted to commend you on a very well thought out plan. I love the holistic approach that you took in terms of looking at the best benefit for the city. And um, you're not only looking at what's good for the short term, but also for the long term. I trust the plan that you've come in place. And please know that we've got the full support from the Ritz-Carlton. Um, after COVID, this destination was one of the first to bounce back. And tourism is, is really, really strong. And we need to continue to retain and to recruit the talent that we can have for our resort. And at the Ridge Carlton, we, we, we recruit the top 1%. And I know that this will help us um, get that. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Go ahead and step up and state your name, please. Hello again, members of the council. Um, Ian Gabriel from Lift to Rise. I just wanted to um, commend the city for prioritizing this, um, these four uh, affordable house sites for affordable housing um, and for acting quickly to ensure that these DDAs made it to a council agenda before the change in the opportunity area maps uh, took effect. Um, as city manager Hagerman so eloquently stated, we're in the midst of a, a housing affordability crisis in the state that really affects every community, including Rancho Mirage. Um, and with so many new jobs coming to uh, Rancho Mirage through projects like Cotino, especially in the leisure and hospitality sector, which are traditionally very low paying jobs, it's, it's imperative that the city take into account the um, living situation of the workforce that's gonna be supporting, that's gonna be filling these roles and supporting the local economy to succeed. Um, and have access to safe, stable, and affordable housing. We're also grateful that the um, city has selected, um, these comments apply to this item and the next three. Um, we're grateful that the city uh, selected the Pacific Companies, National Core, and the Blue Companies um, to develop these sites. Um, all three of those affordable developers are active in the, for the Housing Collaborative Action Network, which Lift to Rise convenes um, around that regional affordable housing strategy that I spoke about earlier. All three of these affordable developers have a track record of bringing high quality, um, aesthetically pleasing, and um, yeah, desired affordable housing to communities across the Coachella Valley. Um, and I have no doubt that they will do uh, an amazing job of creating um, safe, stable, and affordable housing for residents of Rancho Mirage. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? That was the last speaker. Thank you, Christy, and thank you all for, for your, your comments. I appreciate everything that all of you have said. Uh, and I really appreciate Councilmember Mulatto sitting with me on the Affordable Housing Subcommittee, and thank you for mentioning that, those of you from the chamber who spoke. Uh, and so uh, for council comments today, I think it's appropriate for me to first ask Councilmember Mulatto if she has something to say. Well, thank you very much. At one time, I worked for the redevelopment agency for the city of Cathedral City, and as the city manager had mentioned earlier, creating affordable housing at one time, though difficult, was a lot easier than it's been the last 10 years. Since the closing of the California Redevelopment Agency, funding dried up, but not the need for affordable housing, which placed cities across the state of California in a crisis mode to begin with. Now, with this additional move that the state um, delivered to all of us six weeks ago, city manager came 
to Mayor Downs and myself and said, these are the circumstances before you. And we'll understand if you don't want to move forward. And I can say with confidence that wasn't an option. We recognize the crisis that exists not only in other cities, but most importantly, our city. The pleas from our business community to assist with affordable housing so workers have a shorter distance. And uh, there, there just wasn't any option. The only question we asked is with everything going on in our community development department, could our staff handle this adjustment, this modification? And we make policy. We don't do the work. It's our staff and our staff just went full board. And the developers that we are partnering with also went full board and for which I am most appreciative and thankful. So kudos to our, kudos to our staff, our housing, our housing coordinator here. At Marcus, we wouldn't have been able to do, to do this. So again, thank you to everyone for making this happen. Thank you, Lynn. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, we've come a long way. Um, after the um, redevelopment agency basically expired, um, the redevelopment successor agency was created. And uh, that goes back a number of years. And I was on the board of that successor agency. And it seems now that we've gone full cycle from having funds to be able to develop affordable housing to having no funds. And now, again, creating this opportunity as a result of city-owned property. So it's exciting. Um, it just complements everything else that we're doing in the city. I, too, am you know, most indebted to staff for putting in the hours necessary to uh, get the job done. And now, of course, we want to be supportive of the development partners that have bid on these projects and wish them the best as far as obtaining the financing now to get it done. And that's the key to it all. Nothing happens until they get the money to be able to build it. But at least we've put everything in place now to enable the developers to get to that position. So I'm very proud to have done that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ted. Council Member Marker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm very supportive of this and very appreciative of our staff, of Steve and Len. You've done an exceptional job um, in a very timely manner. And our city is, I'm sure, very grateful to you and those who will at one point in time be utilizing these properties. Thank you, Meg. Council Member O'Keefe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as a newcomer, I would like all of my fellow citizens to know that you get your money's worth out of the work uh, the staff puts in. Um, these last two weeks have been intense, eye-opening, a little staggering to me, uh, but the job got done, and um, it's, it's a very good thing. So thank you. Thank you, Michael. I want to talk about uh, two things. First, I, I want to... Um, Thank uh, Isaiah for his comments about the work that staff did and also my council colleagues for, for their commendation of staff. It was uh, just a, a few short weeks ago that we learned uh, that uh, the state of California was making a change from high tide designation to moderate designation for uh, these, uh, these parcels in our city, which, uh, as I think most of you now have some understanding, it would have, at the 1st of January, just a, a couple of weeks from now, uh, would have rendered the ability to, pr to enter into development agreements with developers, uh, would have rendered it to almost zero. Uh, so we had little choice but to work very hard and very quickly uh, to try to come to uh, uh, development agreements uh, with these three um, developers. And thank you so much to staff and to, uh, to the developers who are here today uh, for working so hard to get this done. Um, the other item that I wanted to talk about is on December 8th, there was an article in the Desert Sun 
that uh, talked about affordable housing in this city. It also talked about Cotino, and it suggested that maybe there should have been some affordable housing uh, in Cotino. I want to tell you that this city has a full holistic approach to housing at every single level. Now, I did mention that when I was interviewed by the Desert Sun for that article, but I don't think they gave us uh, the full approach to what this city is doing in uh, our approach to affordable housing and housing at every level. This, these four projects that we're talking about signing development agreements today, these will result in, as Isaiah suggested, somewhere in the neighborhood of 700 plus um, affordable housing units um, entitled in our city. Housing and community development in the state of California requires us over the next uh, seven years, the eight years of our housing element, which began uh, December or January 1st, rather, of this year, the number is 1,746 units that we must entitle over the next eight years. This, these four projects alone that we're talking about today will get us to 40 to 45 percent of the way towards the goal that the state has established for us. I don't know of another city in this state that has been able to accomplish that in this short a time. The other issue is, uh, as I said a few moments ago, housing at every level. So uh, affordable housing, uh, workforce housing is also important. Um, one of the criticisms of, of Cotino was workforce or affordable housing that's close by. We on this council in a recent council meeting approved a project on Monterey just south of the Home Depot. It's a mixed use development. It will result in about 400 or so condos that fall into the affordable, I'm sorry, into the workforce housing category. That project is within commute distance. Let me tell you the commute distance. It's within bike and walking commute distance of Cotino. So I would suggest that this city does have a full holistic approach to housing at every level. We've just finished, uh, we're, we're in the process of finishing out uh, the development at Dell Webb for age-restricted housing. And yes, we have high-end housing at Cotino as well. So we have an approach to housing at every single level in this city. And I would hope that the Desert Sun is listening to what I just had to say. Thank you, everyone. May I have, a, actually, let me ask uh, Lynn Mulatto, who was my, uh, my colleague uh, on the Affordable Housing Subcommittee, to please uh, uh, give us a motion. By the way, just before she uh, <laughs> makes the motion, uh, I want to tag on to what you just said, Mayor. And I think the point being is that every single development within our city doesn't necessarily have to have affordable housing in that specific development. What we're dealing with is affordable housing in total within the confines of the city. That's our responsibility. So for somebody to say, Catino doesn't have affordable housing or this project doesn't have affordable housing, we take a look at the city as a whole and we can say, say that we stand proud in fulfilling that commitment. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Lynn? That's Wally, you'll have a chance in a few minutes. Thank you. That the Housing Authority Board adopt resolution number 2023 HA next in order and execute a disposition and development agreement, DDA, with accompanying deeds for the disposition of parcel A1 of assessor's parcel number 685-090-11 for the development of a multifamily affordable housing with Pacific West Communities, Inc. in accordance with the terms of the DDA subject to final review and approval of executive director and general counsel. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Uh, Wally, I'll give you an opportunity to speak, uh, but please wait until after this next staff report, and then we will have public comment. You can talk then if you like. Uh, all right, uh, next item uh, in, uh, of public, uh, in the public hearings is uh, 
is item 18 on the agenda. The subject is approval of disposition and development agreement with National Community Renaissance of California and USA Properties Fund regarding disposition of housing authority property for affordable housing. Uh, and again, the staff report will be delivered by housing manager, Marcus Alleman. Marcus, your report, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair Downs, Housing Authority Board, and City staff. On August 28th, 2023, the city initiated a request for qualification with the intent to develop a multifamily affordable housing project with a minimum of 200 affordable units on a 10 acre parcel of land on housing element inventory site B. Site B is an approximately 53.76 acre parcel of land zoned for 28 plus minus acres of parkland and 25 plus minus acres of high density residential with an affordable housing overlay. During the review process, city staff was made aware that the 2024 California Tax Credit Allocation Committee and Department of Housing and Community Development draft opportunity maps were made available in late October and that the designation for various sites throughout the city and Coachella Valley would be changed from high resource to moderate resource designations. This change in designation strongly impacts the potential for state funding sources, which makes affordable housing development for this site virtually impossible as of January 1st, 2024. On November 21st, 2023, the Housing Authority Board authorized staff and general counsel to negotiate draft disposition and development agreements with accompanying deeds for the purpose of establishing site control for the development of affordable housing on housing element inventory site B with Pacific West Communities, Inc., National Community Renaissance of California and USA Properties Fund and, and Blue LLC for future consideration by the Housing Authority Board before the end of the calendar year. Given authorization, staff and general counsel began negotiating a draft disposition and development agreement with National Renaissance of California and USA Properties Fund. Both parties have collaboratively worked toward producing a disposition and development agreement that is suitable for all involved and provides the best opportunity to achieve the development of a minimum of 150 multifamily affordable housing units. Simultaneously, staff worked with consultant Michael Baker International to map and record the new parcels of the high density residential portion of assessor's parcel number 685090-011. The site being considered is the five acre parcel found at the eastern center portion of the larger parcel, now known as parcel A2. City staff recommends that the Housing Authority Board approve resolution number 2023-AA- next in order and execute a disposition and development agreement with accompanying deeds for the disposition of parcel A2 of, a par of assessor's parcel number 685-090-011 for the development of multifamily affordable housing with National Renaissance of California and USA Properties Fund in accordance with the terms of the DDA subject to final review and approval of executive director and general counsel. This concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions you may have and present are representatives of National Renaissance of California. Thank you, Marcus, for your report. It is now time for uh, public comment. And Wally, I'll give you an opportunity to speak first. Thank you, Mayor Downs. I want to mention the term of, of affordable <clears throat> housing. Affordable housing covers a lot of ground. It is a euphemism. It does not help the poor. Reminds me of Ronald Reagan, President Ronald Reagan, of his trickle-down economics, which help the very rich, but not the poor. If I may make a, a suggestion for a solution, which, and I've mentioned this before, this affordable housing units, I'm imagining that there will be <clears throat> apartments, usually stacked up one on top of the other, no yard, probably with no appliances inside, that the people that rent those 
usually, what I, under, what I understand, usually the people that rent those <coughs> apartments are poor people. Older people, 55 and older, on Social Security, very low wages. That's why everybody uses the state governments using the euphemism to affordable housing. It's a euphemism. If I may make a suggestion on a solution, and I've mentioned this before, the poor people, older people that rent those apartments should have an option to buy so that all the money they're putting up for rent doesn't just go down the drain. Thank you. Would the city clerk let us know if we have any other speaker cards on this item? Yes, Taylor LeBolt Varner. Okay, uh, good afternoon, Mayor Downs, Mayor Pro Tem Weil, uh, honorable council members of the city of Rancho Mirage and staff. My name is Taylor Leibolt Varner. I am on the planning and acquisitions team. I serve as a project manager for National Community Renaissance or National Core. We are an award-winning national nonprofit affordable housing organization specializing in the development, construction, and long-term management of quality affordable housing. Since our founding in Rancho Cucamonga over 30 years ago, our portfolio of market rate and affordable housing units has grown to over 10,000 in Southern California, Texas, and Florida, with the majority of our units located right here in Riverside and San Bernardino counties. For this opportunity, we've partnered with USA Properties Fund, um, who also specializes in developing, building, and managing multifamily communities. And since their inception in 1981, they have uh, developed and managed over 18,000 units of multifamily housing. We're excited for the opportunity to bring this partnership and this experience um, into a new partnership with the city of Rancho Mirage for the production and long-term management of at least 150 um, units of affordable workforce housing. Uh, we are here today as a direct result of years of longstanding commitment by the city of Rancho Mirage to bringing affordable housing to this particular site. Um, yes, a uh, lot has been said about the race, the, the sprint at the end, but really it's a sprint at the end of a marathon um, yeah, uh, that the city has uh, been a part of to make this a possibility. Uh, everything from vetting the site through your housing element to applying the overlay, subdividing the site, and then ultimately bringing these development agreements in a timely manner is a testament to your commitment to working families in Rancho Mirage. And it's especially exciting for me as a working mom raising a family in the Coachella Valley. What this says to me is that you as leaders recognize the importance that working families have in the desert. It shows that you recognize that our way of life, our beautiful way of life in the desert is just not possible without the people who power our economy and make it a possibility. And so today, what you're saying is that the people who teach our kids, who keep our streets safe, who uh, grow our food and keep our grocery stores stocked, that uh, we matter and that um, we are welcome in the city of Rancho Mirage and um, we're just so grateful for that. Um, we commit as a team not only to providing a beautiful brick and mortar community to Ranch Mirage, but to wrap residents around with services um, that promote their economic mobility and well-being. Um, we're envisioning a continuation of our partnership with Desert Recreation District to provide after school services and recreation programming to residents. And we've also been um, talking to workforce groups um, and economic groups like CVEP to talk about what kind of programming at this site could make it serve as not just housing, but a launching pad into um, greater economic mobility. Um, so I'm probably over time, um, but just really grateful uh, to be here, um, to work with you moving forward on this opportunity and to make this, and make this community happen. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I have no other speaker cards. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? No other speakers. Okay, thank you, Christy. Uh, next public hearing is agenda item number Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I do need a motion. <laughs> Thank you. I got ahead of myself there. Um, I, I guess I need to ask uh, if there are any additional uh, council comments uh, other than those we've already made. Uh, if there are none, uh, Mayor, I'll make a motion. Please go ahead. Uh, that the, the city council uh, recommends that the Housing Authority Board Adopt resolution number 2023-HA next in order, 
and execute a disposition and development agreement, DDA, with accompanying deeds for the disposition of parcel A-2 of assessor's parcel number 6850900011 for the development of multifamily affordable housing with National Community Renaissance of California and USA Properties Fund in accordance with the terms of the DDA, subject to final review and approval of executive director and general counsel. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Okay, now uh, next public hearing item is agenda item number 19. The subject is approval of disposition and development agreement with Blue LLC regarding disposition of housing authority property for affordable housing. And again, it is housing manager Marcus Aleman who will deliver the staff report. Marcus. Thanks again. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chair Downs, Housing Authority Board and City staff. On August 28, 2023, the city initiated a request for qualification with the intent to develop a multifamily affordable housing project with a minimum of 200 affordable units on a 10 acre parcel of land on housing element inventory site B. Site B is an approximately 53.76 acre parcel of land zoned for 28 plus minus acres of parkland and 25 plus minus acres of high density residential with an affordable housing overlay. During the review process, city staff was made aware that the 2024 California Tax Credit Allocation Committee and Department of Community Housing Development draft opportunity maps were made available in late October and that the designation for various sites throughout the city and Coachella Valley would be changed from high resource to moderate resource designations. This change in designation strongly impacts the potential for state funding sources, which makes <clears throat> affordable housing development for this site virtually impossible as of January 1st 2024. On November 21st, 2023, the Housing Authority Board authorized staff and general counsel to negotiate draft disposition and development agreements with accompanying deeds for the purpose of establishing site control for the development of affordable housing on housing element inventory site B with Pacific West Communities, Inc., National Community Renaissance of California and USA Properties Fund, and Blue LLC for future consideration by the Housing Authority Board before the end of the calendar year. Given authorization, staff and general counsel began negotiating a draft disposition and development agreement with Blue LLC. Both parties have collaboratively worked toward producing a disposition and development agreement that is suitable to all involved and provides the best opportunity to achieve the development of a minimum of 250 multifamily affordable housing units. Simultaneously, staff worked with consultant Michael Baker International to map and record the new parcels of the high density residential portion of assessor's parcel number 685-65-090-011. The site being considered is a 10 acre parcel found at the southeast corner portion of the larger parcel now known as parcel A3. City staff recommends that the Housing Authority Board approve resolution number 2023-HA-1 in order and execute a disposition and development agreement with accompanying deeds for the disposition of parcel A3 of assessor's parcel number 685-090-011 for the development of multifamily affordable housing with Blue LLC in accordance with the terms of the DDA subject to final review and approval of executive director and general counsel. This concludes my presentation. I am available for any questions you may have and present are representatives of Blue LLC. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, it is now time for public hearing on this item. And would the city clerk please let us know if we have any speaker cards on this item? I did not receive any speaker cards. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this item? No speakers. Thank you, Christy. Any um, council comments? Okay, seeing none, may I have a motion, please? I'd be happy to make the motion that the Housing Authority Board adopt resolution number 2023 HA next in order and execute. A disposition and development agreement, DDA, with accompanying deeds for the disposition of parcel 
A3 of Assessor's Parcel Number 685-090-001 for the development of multifamily affordable housing with Blue LLC in accordance with the terms of the DDA subject to final review and approval of Executive Director and General Counsel. I'll second that. Uh, we have a, a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, Marcus, um, uh, you're getting your work in uh, this afternoon, uh, developing staff reports. So uh, next public hearing is uh, item number 20 on our agenda, and the subject is approval of disposition and development agreement with Blue LLC regarding disposition of housing authority property, property for affordable housing. Marcus? Hello again. Good afternoon, Chair Downs, Housing Authority Board, board and city staff. In 2009, the city of Rancho Mirage Housing Authority acquired the former Rancho Palms Mobile Home Park located at 39360 Peterson Road directly from the owner of the park with the intention of developing affordable housing. Its surrounding area is made up of the Desert Cove Drive neighborhood to the north, Butler Abrams Trail to the east, and, public, and the public storage facility to the west, and the housing authority-owned affordable housing property, Santa Rosa Villas, to the south. In the city's sixth cycle housing element, this 12 acre parcel is listed in table 44 as inventory site D and is included in the housing elements goals policies and programs. The implementation of the goals policies and programs related to this site are intended to facilitate the development of affordable housing. In July of this year the City Council approved zoning text amendment 23-0002 and general plan zoning map amendment 23-001 changing the site's zoning from mobile home park to high density residential and applied an affordable housing overlay as required by the certified housing element. Following the housing elements land use policy implementation on the site, the housing authority entered into an exclusive negotiation, negotiating agreement with Blue LLC for the development of affordable housing. On November 21st, 2023, the housing authority board authorized staff and general counsel to negotiate draft disposition development agreements with accompanying deeds for the purpose of establishing site control for the development of affordable housing with the Pacific Companies, National Corps, and USA Properties, and Blue LLC. Staff and General Counsel began negotiating a draft disposition and development agreement with Blue LLC. Both parties have collaboratively worked toward producing a disposition and development agreement that is suitable to all involved and provides the best opportunity to achieve the development of up to 120 affordable housing units for veterans. City staff recommends that the Housing Authority Board approve resolution number 23-HA next in order and execute a disposition and development agreement with accompanying deeds for the purpose of establishing site control of assessor's parcel number 689-180-012 for the development of affordable housing with Blue LLC in accordance with the terms of the DDA subject to final review and approval of executive director and general counsel. This concludes my presentation. I'm available for any question, questions you may have. And present are representatives of Blue LLC. Thank you, Marcus. Now time for uh, public comment on this uh, topic. Uh, do we have any speaker cards? Yes, we have one. Mike Fontana. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of the council and staff. Um, thank you for this opportunity to speak. I'm here today as a resident of the Peterson Ranch Desert Cove neighborhood. I live at 70411 Desert Cove, directly adjacent to this project. I'm here today to welcome Blue Companies to the neighborhood and request that they work early on uh, with the neighborhood to avoid and mitigate any conflicts that we may have. Um, obviously, we're concerned about um, traffic, parking, uh, building height, density, uh, setback requirements, and noise. Um, I think there's also some concern since this site has been vacant since 2009, uh, that before construction starts, that there be some rodent and pest mitigation 
uh, because we do have them, I'm sorry to say. And uh, we're concerned that when the earth gets turned, they'll find homes in our homes, <laughs> right? Um, I do have one question that maybe staff could answer. I realize that the um, DDA is not subject to CEQA or any IR, um, but we are curious about the process when the actual development is proposed and how that will be reviewed. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. That was the only speaker card. Are there any other speakers? Okay, please step forward and state your name. Afternoon, I'm Mark Irving. I'm with Blue Companies and uh, here to answer any questions uh, with the gentleman. I'm more than glad to meet up with him and I imagine we'll do that a few times. And his question about the process, I'm, I'm responsible for entitlements. I do have some questions too and I look forward to speaking with you uh, since it was a previously developed site. I want to get an understanding of exactly what you'll want. So uh, we look forward to working with the city on the, the multiple projects. And thank you for your support and I, your, your um, chamber and your uh, various businesses, the hotels, I wish I could take them to other cities that, because they did uh, message the importance of affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? That was the last speaker. Thank you, Christy. Okay, uh, so an answer to um, Mike Fontana's question, uh, well, I'll ask uh, Mina to please uh, address that issue if you would. Absolutely, each project will go through the standard entitlement process, which includes CEQA review. Thank you, Mina. Uh, any council comments? Lynn? Thank you. I'm particularly thrilled that this particular project is going to be focused on veterans, veteran housing, veteran services, for all those that served our country and need assistance. And I thank everyone for their support on that. Mayor Pratem? Yes, thank you, Mayor. And uh, I'm going to echo uh, Councilmember Mulatto's comments uh, being a, uh, a veteran myself, uh, the idea of having a project that um, recognizes the importance of our veterans' contribution uh, to our country and to have a development like this within Rancho Mirage uh, means a lot and is an inspiration uh, to myself and other veterans. So I couldn't be more pleased and proud to have that in Rancho Mirage. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Councilmember Parker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a very unique development, and I echo Lynn's and Ted's sentiments. I welcome this to Rancho Mirage, and we truly do look forward to honoring our veterans in this respect. Thank you, Meg. Councilmember O'Keefe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, when I learned about this uh, development and that it was for veterans, I was all in. So uh, this is a good thing for the city. Thank you. So these four projects that we just talked about, uh, this is not the last time that they will come before us. Uh, this is simply the signing of a, um, uh, of a uh, development agreement that uh, allows uh, us to move forward with these, uh, on these four projects. Uh, they'll come before us uh, for entitlements uh, over the coming months. Uh, and uh, let's hope that we can move with some dispatch on uh, getting them approved and uh, moving forward with, uh, with all four of these projects. Uh, so thank you all for being here today to talk about these projects. Much appreciated. And may I have a, um, a motion uh, on this item? Uh, Mayor, I'd, I'd, I'd like to make the motion. I'm proud to do that, uh, that the Housing Authority adopt resolution number or let the City Council recommend that the Housing Authority adopt resolution number 23HA next in order and execute a disposition and development agreement with the accompanying deeds for the purpose of establishing site control of assessor's parcel 
parcel number 689-180-012 for the development of affordable housing with Blue LLC in accordance with the terms of the DDA, subject to the final review and approval of Executive Director and General Counsel. Do I have a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. And the city manager would like to say something. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. One, congratulations. Uh, that was a big day for affordable housing within Rancho Mirage. So I just wanted to talk about numbers really quick. So our allocation number um, was 1,746 housing units. Of those, 670 of them are not income restricted. And so everything that we're talking about today is true multifamily affordable housing that is income restricted. So the 670 units out of the 1746, those don't carry any restriction on income. Those are just housing units that need to develop on the inventory sites. So in reality, uh, our requirement is for 1,076 units that carry some level of income restriction. Uh, so with approximately 760 units that we just considered in the last four items, that's about 70% of the income restricted units of affordable housing within our city. Thank you, Isaiah. And as I said earlier, that's a remarkable achievement in such a short time. Uh, so thank you to everyone uh, on staff who worked so diligently to get this done. Uh, and thank you to the developers who worked with us. Okay, we now move to the action calendar and the first item is agenda item number 21. The subject is consideration of resolution of intention to annex territory comprising 72.386 acres to community facilities district number one in connection with the tentative track map number TTM 38291. The staff report will be delivered by financial analyst Jacob De La Cruz. Jacob, your report, please. Thank you, Mayor, and good afternoon, Council. This item is the first step in the city's annexation process for developments within the city's jurisdiction. The second and final step is planned to be considered at the February 1st council meeting. The territory proposed for annexation is located on the southwest corner of Monterey Avenue and Gerald Ford Drive. The territory is comprised of four parcels totaling approximately 72.386 acres and is slated to be subdivided into 175 residential lots, some additional remainder lots, Lots for open space, recreation, private streets, and a CVWD well site. Tentative tract map 38291 was originally approved by the Planning Commission on July 14, 2022. Condition of approval number 12 for the project requires that the territory be annexed into CFD number 1. In accordance with the condition of approval, the owner of the annexed territory submitted a petition for annexation requesting that the City Council initiate proceedings to annex the territory into CFD 1 and provide an expedited approval of the annexation and the levy of the special tax. Upon approval of the resolution, the city will be able to accept the petition submitted by the owner for annexation, consent to the levy upon the annexed territory, allow for the shortening of the time for the special election to expedite the annexation, accept and preliminarily approve the annexation map and direct the city clerk to record the map and finally establish the date and time of the public hearing on the, annexed, on the annexation of the territory. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Jacob. Time for uh, public comment on this item. Do we have any speaker cards? We do not. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this item? There are no speakers. Okay, uh, and uh, if we have any council comments, I'd like to hear them. Otherwise, can I have a motion? I'll make a motion that the city council adopt resolution Number 2023, next in order, declaring the city's intention to annex territory to community facilities, district number one, and to levy a special tax therein for additional police and fire services pre preliminarily, approve a map of the area proposed to be annexed, and schedule a public hearing to consider the annexation and the levy of the special tax for annexation number 193. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. Last item on the uh, action uh, calendar is item number 22 on our agenda. The subject is consideration of resolution of intention to annex territory comprising 2.5 acres to community facilities district number one in connection with tentative parcel map number TPM 38380. 
And again, it is financial analyst Jacob De La Cruz who will deliver the staff report. Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. This item is the first step in the city's annexation process for developments within the city's jurisdiction. The second and final step is planned to be considered at the February 1st council meeting. The territory proposed for annexation is located south of Ginger Rogers Road and approximately 1,064 feet east of Bob Hope Drive. The territory is comprised of one parcel totaling approximately 2.5 acres and is slated to be subdivided into four residential lots. Tentative parcel map 38380 was originally approved by the Planning Commission on January 26, 2023. Condition of approval number 13 for the project requires that the territory be annexed into CFD number one. In accordance with the condition of approval, the owner of the annexed territory submitted a petition for annexation requesting that the City Council initiate proceedings to annex the territory into CFD1 and provide for expedited approval of the annexation and the levy of the special tax. Upon approval of the resolution, the City will be able to accept the petition submitted by the owner for annexation, consent to the levy upon the annexed territory, allow for the shortening of the time for the special election to expedite the annexation, accept and preliminarily approve the annexation map and direct the city clerk to record the map and finally establish the date and time of the public hearing on the annexation of the territory. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Jacob, would the city clerk please let us know if we have any speaker cards on this item? I did not receive any speaker cards. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this item? There are no speakers. Okay, and if I have any council comments, I'd like to hear them. Otherwise, may I have a motion? I'll, I'll make a motion. I'd like to recommend that the city make a motion to recommend that the city council adopt resolution number 2023 next in order declaring the city's intention to annex territory to community facilities district number one and to levy a special tax therein for additional police and fire services preliminarily approve a map of the area proposed to be annexed and schedule a public hearing to consider the annexation and the levy of the special tax for annexation number 194. May I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. We do not have a closed session today. Uh, this is the end of a momentous uh, city council meeting. We have um, done a great job, in my opinion, of um, achieving eventually achieving our affordable housing goal in this city, and I thank everyone for their efforts. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>